Hey everybody, I'm back at it with another Ben 10 action figure review. Today's video will conclude the original 10 aliens. Uh, this, after this video, I'll have reviewed the first original 10 aliens of Ben 10. Uh, but do not worry, as everybody knows, there are plenty more aliens after that. Uh, the, the 10 in Ben 10 kind of lost some of its significance after a while. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, we've got Rip Jaws, Upgrade, Ghost Freak, and Cannonball. I'll be talking about these guys in this video today. Um, all these came with the standard accessories that I mentioned before, the uh, two different little animation discs. Um, Ghost Freak did come with an additional accessory, and I'll talk about that when I get to him. But for right now, I'm going to start off with Rip Jaws. Here is Rip Jaws. Now, Rip Jaws is probably the or one of the most underrated, underused aliens in the entire series, in my opinion. Uh, he's just a cool alien, and I mean, he's just so underused. I think in the original series, out of four seasons, I, I think I read he was only used like nine times. I mean, that's four seasons worth of content, and this guy was only used a handful of times. I just I think he deserved more being one of the original ten. Um, I mean he's just just a cool alien, but so let's let's just get into the review here. Uh, put my grievances aside. Uh, so articulation wise, he does have a head swivel, um, but unlike most of these other figurines, it does not go 360 because of this fin. Um, it kind of just it doesn't allow for that movement. You can move it about that far either way, uh, but due to this fin back here, it does not do the 360. And then the arms, however, they are your typical 360 movement. And that's it for the arms. Really nothing there. One solid piece. So, And then again, down here, the leg movement is really hindered because of his little uh, you know, dress or loincloth or whatever. Uh, this, this is um, it's a flexible plastic but it's pretty stiff at the same time and it just completely hinders the movement in the legs. So that's about as far as you can get forward and then going back that's about as far as you can do up here with the hip joint. Um, the knee joint does go back pretty far. Uh, that's pretty typical. So the the clothing does not affect the knee joint, it's just the hip joint. Can bend about that far forward. And then nothing no, more in the in the feet or the legs, no articulation down here. Um, but yeah, again, this is really hindered because of all his clothing and stuff. Um, but he does have one cool point of articulation here. He's got his jaws. Now that is kind of um, a saving, so a saving grace of this figure. Uh, with all our other articulation being so hindered and lacking, it's really cool to have that jaw, the the jaw hinge there with that articulation. Um, we saw this with Wild Mutt. He also had this jaw, uh, but for Rip Jaws, it holds a lot more meaning. Um, without that, it would be pretty disappointing. You know, Rip Jaws, his namesake, like his whole thing is his jaws. Uh, so without, you know, that jaw there, he'd just be Rip. So it's it's good that they included that. Um, if they wouldn't have, like I said, it'd be really disappointing with, you know, it's 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 an easy thing to do so I'm glad they went ahead and did it you can see that it's not really painted in there which I'll talk about that more later but it does open a pretty decent amount might even open a little bit more than Wild Mutt did uh, which again is appropriate for the character so that like I said having that's a nice little extra touch that kinda makes up for the other articulation uh, lacking but, and that's it on this guy for articulation. Not much else there. Uh, painting and detailing. 
looks really good. Um, you can see he's got those little scales all over. They really went all out with that. They, and these are raised and textured all over his body. Some nice detailing there. He's got the the fins. And like I, I pointed this one out earlier, he's got the fin back here. Some nice detailing on that with uh, the indented lines and creases. He's got his little angler light on his forehead. That is bendy. Although I, I don't know if I'd recommend bending it too much. You never know if it'll stick or break or or what. Um, but the loincloth looks nice. Like I said, it is bendy. Um, but again, I probably wouldn't recommend it. I mean, if you hold it in that bent pose for long, it might stick that way. The claws look nice. You can see he has all that webbing between his fingers. The detail goes into the palm, too. The feet, he's got the webbing between his toes. This guy's pretty scuffed up, but... Um, the actual manufacturer paint job is really nice. Nothing's out of line. Um, the only thing with the paint job I did touch on a few minutes ago is in that jaw. Um, they they could have... Oh, well, you know what? I'm just noticing now the reason it's not painted is because it's the same neck that we see right here. So this jaw drops that far that it actually goes and exposes that neck in his mouth so I guess if they had pain in that then he would have part of his neck out here be green so that does that's understandable I guess now that I I, I noticed that um, still kinda makes it look a little weird when you do have his mouth open um, but seems like it was kind of an unavoidable detail there the teeth look great I mean again like I said the, the whole identity of this alien uh, the, one of his major powers, other than uh, swimming and breathing underwater, is his powerful jaws, his huge teeth, and I just think they did an awesome job. He does have some line detailing in the mouth. The teeth look really well. They're really nicely sculpted. You can see his purple eyes there are raised up. And then his gills, those are all detailed and indented there, and all his gills here. Omnitrix symbol looks really nice. So here is Ripjaw's next to upgrade. Uh, really accurate, good scaling there. Uh, pretty accurate to the show. Honestly, I think that these four aliens that I'm reviewing in this video probably have the best scaling uh, side by side than any other video I've done. All of them look really, uh, you know, show accurate in there in terms of size and scaling. Uh, probably just because you know there's. Uh, not many outliers in this video, you know, no one that's super small like Grey Matter or no one like Ben or anyone that's huge like Forearms. All the aliens I'm reviewing in this video are kind of average height in terms of Ben's aliens, so the scaling on these is really nice. Uh, looks pretty good. So let's get on into reviewing Upgrade. Upgrade's another one that I feel like is really powerful yet so underused. I mean, th this guy has the potential to be really powerful. Uh, he can take over any technology and upgrade it. <laughs> and it just, he was kind of underutilized in the show. Ben never thought to use him or never wanted to use him. I don't know. Anyway, let's get into the action figure. Um, Articulation-wise, his head does have a 360 swivel here. So that goes all the way around. And as you can see, um, because of this, the, the only way these lines on his head line up are if, is if he is looking straight forward. So if you do have him looking to the side or you, know, you turn the head around, these lines don't line up. Um, that's kind of a given. I mean, you expect that. What else, what else can they do? Um, but for posing, you know, if you're super picky, it, it would kind of throw it off a bit. Uh, the arms, 360, both arms go all the way around. 
and then he just has the hip joint here goes forward and does not go back that is literally as far as it goes back right there goes forward about 90 degrees a little, a little less than that um, but does not go back at all so uh, articulation on this guy he does is, I mean it, there's like two points of articulation three points um, I mean there's just nothing in the arms nothing else in the legs no knee joints so that's a pretty basic um, so moving on to painting and detailing um, just phenomenal I mean seriously look at this all of that those green lines painted all over his body. I mean, they just did a great job. All oh, looks so good. And they, they just, you know, they did not get lazy here. Every little line all over his back, all over his arms. That is some nice paint detailing. That's really cool. They got just the right color green. I mean, it, it just looks nice. He's got some big old arms here. These are big, thick arms. <laughs> it's fitting to the character, but um, basically, because of those arms, he stands with his arms on the ground. Um, and honestly, I don't because the arms are so big and they they kind of you know off balance his weight. Um, the only way he's gonna stand is if his arms are on the ground. If you try to put them up or anything, it just throws him off balance. You know, they just, at, in some way, the arms have to be on the ground to help him balance. His body is just too heavy for these little legs to support with these arms and everything. So, when he stands, his arms are touching, or his hands are touching the, the ground. Um, you know, not, like, show accurate. Obviously, Upgrade can stand on his own in the show. But for, for the toy, he does need some help balancing there, um, which he does with his arms. And otherwise, I mean, not a whole lot else going on. Like I said, the big, the big thing with this figure is just the paint detailing. It looks really good. And scaling with upgrade next to Ghost Freak. Again, oh. Let me move the camera because Ghost Freak's a little higher there. Again, pretty accurate. Really, uh, no complaints there. Very show accurate. Moving on to Ghost Freak. Now, Ghost Freak did come with an accessory. Um, it came with this stand. Uh, not this stand particularly, but he did come with a stand. I lost the stand that he came with a while ago, so I kind of built my own. Um, it's not anything fancy, doesn't look super great, but it works. Um, the original stain he came with was the same color as his skin, it was the exact same gray color, and then it, it functioned just like the one I have. It was a stick that popped into his back with a platform on the bottom, I think had like the Omnitrix symbol on it, um, but the entire stand, including the Omnitrix symbol, was the, the gray color of his skin, and I'll include a picture of that at the end of my review. Um, but yeah, I did lose that stand, so I made a, a stand on my own, and it works and functions just the same. But so getting on to the actual action figure, uh, as for articulation, his head does move 360, and you know, kind of like I mentioned with upgrade, not a huge deal, but moving the head does uh, move those lines out of place. The only way to have that line up perfectly is to have them looking straight forward. Um, then arm articulation 360 all the way around in the in the shoulders. Nothing else in the elbows, nothing in the hands, just one solid piece for the arms. And then he does have this like tail rotation. Um, so I guess if you want his tail to be pointing up or to the side this this lower part of his body down here with the tail does swivel turns all the way around um, I've I've never posed him with that turned I mean really I guess you could 
it doesn't look bad. I've just never done it. Um, but you know, it was nice of them to include that. The manufacturers, it's nice. It's probably better than just being one solid piece. Um, so it's it's a little something. But otherwise, that's it for articulation. Now, you know, I can't really say it's disappointing with his lack of articulation because it's Ghost Freak. He doesn't he doesn't have legs. He, you know, he doesn't have much going on body wise. So maybe an elbow joint would have been nice but really for what the character is they gave him like all the articulation they could have I mean even a little bit more down here with this tail um, so really I, he doesn't have a lot of articulation but I'm not saying that's disappointing so painting and detailing looks really good uh, he's got his little pink eye there all the lines all over his body look nice they uh, you can see back here even this lines up where the articulation on the tail is because if you move the tail that goes out of line but it does line up so it's nice of them to you know that's some nice detailing matching all that up even with the articulation it's got the black lines on his arms his weird little fingers he does have this wispy line detailing in his tail that's indented there. Actually sculpted in. Omnitrix symbol. And they did do the detailing. This little, uh, like his folds there. Uh, the Omnitrix symbol is in his, his body, his outer skin. So that looks very good. You can see that's raised a bit. And then as for the stand, um, it just popped, or it, uh, goes into the hole on his back you can see there's this hole has a screw this one does not um, so the stand goes in this in the hole that does not have the screw and it just pops right in there and then you can have him standing and like I said this stand is not the actual one it comes with but it's it works the exact same you just pop that in there and it lets him stand or, or float I guess it looks like he's floating there um, can he stand on his own uh, kinda you, you kinda have to get creative um, you have to put his arms out and then kinda I don't know use position the tail the best he can and I guess he can kind of stand on his own it's more like he's doing a push up or something but um, to to make him look the best he can, it, you you want to use the stand. I mean, with the stand, it really does look like he's floating there. And I, even more so for me personally, because the stand I made is black, and the display I have him is black. Uh, the display I have him in is black. Uh, the background is black. So with the black stand and the black background you can't really see that stand and it looks even more so like he's just floating there it's it's cool I like it um, so for me personally this black homemade stand is works even a little bit better than the gray stand um, but if you do go to buy him second hand or something try to make sure that stands there um, just personally I think it's the best way to display him so if you're buying him loose out of package or something try to look for that stand That's him from the back there with the stand in. And then last but not least for this video, Cannon Bolt. So, with Ghost Freak, I concluded the first original 10. I reviewed all of them now. And then starting with Cannon Bolt, we move on to the additional aliens. There's a whole lot of them. There's definitely more than 10. Uh, but Cannon Bolt is the very first one. He's the first alien that Ben turned into that wasn't in the initial playlist of 10. Um, big surprise when I was a kid. I still remember watching that. Like, holy cow, Ben just turned into a new alien. Um, so Cannon Bolt's kind of always had a soft spot in my heart because of that. Uh, he's just a big, clunky alien and I think he's cool he's just he kinda in a way made Ben 10 history being the first Ben 10 alien to you know not be part of the original 10 
So he's he's uh, he's cool in my mind because of that. So again, scaling here looks pretty accurate. Ghost Freak is taller just because he's floating up higher than Cannibal, but the actual sizing and scaling looks pretty accurate. Uh, Cannibal could probably be a little bit bigger, but not too bad. So let me get on to Cannibal here. All right, so here is Cannonbolt. Um, Articulation-wise, he has next to nothing. He has uh, 360 in the arms. I don't know if you would want to call it his elbow or his shoulder, but whatever it is, it does turn around 360. And then he has very limited um, hip articulation. It goes up that far, but does not go back at all. There's nothing there, no movement at all. So it's pretty limited um, in terms of you know going back and forth. Just goes forward, and then that's it. <laughs> Quickest articulation review ever, but that's it. Just a couple points in the arms and then the hips. Uh, nothing else there. But you know, if I'm being nice, I, I I'll you know you can let it slide because the, what what articulation could you give Cannibal? I mean. He's such a big, blocky, clunky character. He doesn't have like a neck or a head, really. I mean, it's all just one body. His face is just all in his body. There's, you know, you couldn't give him neck articulation. You couldn't really give him waist articulation. You couldn't really give him knee articulation. I mean, even in the show, you know, Ben struggles with Cannibal and his clunkiness and and stiffness and. Uh, you know, he's just not a flexible alien, so articulation wise, yeah, he's really lacking here, but what do you expect? I mean, there's not much you could give him. It'd be cool if he can, like, somehow roll up into a ball and articulate him like that. They probably did make some toy like that, but um, not with this figuring. Moving on to the paint and detailing. Um,. You know, it's not great, like, uh, just because this, this color on him is very yellow, and I don't know if that's showing up on the camera as well as in, in person here, but it's not accurate to the show. Uh, the show is much more orange. This is a very, like, mustardy yellow. It just, it's, uh, I don't know how they got that wrong when they were painting it, but it's just not very accurate um, and you know I think they actually fixed that uh, whenever they later on made the it was like the Alien Force or Ultimate Alien version of Cannibal they made a figurine of that uh, where basically the only difference between like design wise is the Omnitrix symbol of the move from the forehead to the chest but they actually got the orange more accurate in that figurine uh, I don't have that figurine but I do remember seeing that and being like hey that looks better <laughs> um, because like I said this is just a mustardy yellow I mean in the right light it almost look, has some green to it I and mean, it's just not very cannibal to you. Like, the color of his eyes here are almost more accurate to what his armor should be than the actual painting on the armor so of all the figurines I've reviewed so far this is Probably one of the worst uh, coloring. Uh, the actual paint and, and detailing is not bad. You know, all the paints in line, everything was painted well. It's just the actual color itself is not accurate. Um, so, disappointed in that. But otherwise, like I said, the rest of the, the figure looks looks really good. Everything's detailed nice and. And it is painted nice, nothing's out of the line, nothing was, uh, you know, nothing was not painted, like they didn't paint, or forget to paint anything. The lines look good, you can see that black line goes all the way around to the back. His back armor looks good. Sculpting on the claws is great, his little pudgy fingers there. The eyes are actually raised. And really all of this lining is raised it's very subtle but it actually is sculpted none of this these lines are just painted on here 
it's actually raised just very very small amount I don't even know if my camera will pick it up but it is it's raised just ever so slightly you can feel it when you touch it so that's pretty cool they didn't just paint that on it's some actual sculpting there but yeah I mean like I said it looks good uh, sculpting and painting wise it's just the color is is not great um, but they did redeem themselves I guess later on they realized their mistake and they did redeem themselves with the the uh, ultimate alien alien force cannonball um, I'll, I'll maybe try and find a picture of that and include it so you can see the color difference because they they did uh, they did improve it later on it's got his little toe claws there so let me get everyone back up here so that concludes today's video like I said that wrapped up the original 10 aliens and between Upgrade, Ghost Freak, and Cannibal, this video probably had the least amount of articulation of any of the videos I've done so far. But given the characters and their body shapes and everything, you know, it, it is what it is. So, my next review, I will be going over Wildvine, Blitzwolfer, Snarrow, and Frankenstrike. Some of my personal favorite aliens. I'm a big fan of the monster aliens, so I'm excited for that one. Keep an eye out for that video. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.